Good afternoon, everyone, to this briefing today. My name is Agnes Heine, I'm the head of EMA's communication department. We are holding this press briefing today from our premises in Amsterdam. Today, the Safety Committee of the European Medicines Agency, the PRAC, concluded its review of very rare cases of unusual blood clots in people in the U.S. who received the COVID-19 vaccine Janssen. This vaccine has been authorized in March for use in the EU, but has not yet been broadly rolled out. During this press briefing, we will inform you about the outcome of the discussions by the PRAC and the details of the committee's assessment. I'm delighted to have here with me Mrs. Emer Cook, EMA's Executive Director, Dr. Sabine Strauss, the Chair of EMA Safety Committee, the Pharmacovigilance Risk Assessment Committee PRAC, and Dr. Peter Arlett, the Head of Analytics at EMA, who can provide additional information about the data and additional studies that will be carried out. Before we start, I want to explain how we plan to run this press briefing. Please note that your microphone is disabled by default for the duration of the press briefing. We will first hear short remarks by Mrs. Cook and Dr. Strauss, and after that we will have about half an hour for questions. Once the question and answer session starts, please raise your hand in WebEx if you want to ask a question. Today's briefing is being broadcast via YouTube and Europe by satellite. The footage can be used for free by all media. You will find the respective links in the invite you received. I'm now handing over to EMA's Executive Director, Mrs. Cook, please. Thank you very much, Marianne, yes, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and we welcome to this press briefing. We're here today, as Marianne yes has said, because the PRAC has now concluded its review of incidences of uh, thromboembolic events, unusual blood clots with low blood, blood plot platelets following vaccination with the Janssen vac uh, COVID-19 vaccine. Those of you who have been following this will recall that the Prague already anticipated this review on the 9th of April and, and published that it was starting the review already then. Um, in the meantime, we have now heard of eight cases of uh, these very rare side effects in, as part of the rollout in the US uh, where the vaccine has been given to over 7 million um, vaccinees. So it was very important uh, for us to accelerate the review, particularly because the vaccine was due to be rolled out in Europe very shortly. Um, I must stress that we have seen no cases in the EU, but in fact rollout in the EU has been very, uh, there has been very little rollout and a lot of countries are waiting for the outcome of this review to, take, to um, uh, ensure that we have the right information about the product to allow it to be rolled out safely. So on 13th of, of April, we were informed of the eight cases in the US following the vaccination of about 7 million people. Now, this is a very rare effect, but it also makes it very important for doctors and patients to be aware of the signs so that they can spot any concerns and seek specialist uh, help as soon as possible. Um, early intervention by a specialist can change the outcome. The, uh, in our review, we worked very closely with the US FDA and um, we have had no European cases. Uh, I want to also stress that the investigations are planned to continue and that we have, are requiring the company Janssen to perform additional studies and we'll give you more details on those additional studies that are being requested. We're also um, doing our, uh, commissioning our own independent research on thromboembolic events associated with uh, the different vaccines. This weekend, the global toll, death toll from COVID-19 has surpassed 3 million cases worldwide, and there are still thousands of people dying every day. And I, I don't need to tell you that there is untold human suffering behind all of these cases, and these vaccines play an immensely important role in combating this, this pandemic. When vaccines are rolled out to a large number of people, it is possible that very rare side effects can occur. 
and these, are, these will not necessarily have been identified in the clinical trials. But because we have a very good pharmacovigilance system in place in Europe, we can spot these, um, these events very quickly and we can take action to make sure that, that healthcare professionals and patients are aware and can take ne necessary action. So it's really showing that the system works. And I have to say in this case, the fact that um, Prague is making a recommendation before the rollout in the EU is really a sign that of proactivity and accelerated review. Uh, the scientific assessment that Prague has concluded on today will allow uh, vaccination programs in, in member states to take decisions on how to uh, uh, roll out this vaccine based on their national um, uh, on the national situation, which includes uh, uh, details on in infection rates, hospitalization rates, um, ICU admissions, vaccine availability, and so on. So with that, I'd like to hand over to Dr. Sabina Strauss, who's been chairing our Prague and has uh, led this committee to its conclusion. And of course, with, with Dr. Strauss and Dr. Arlett, we are available to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Cook, and good afternoon. <clears throat> After a careful review of the cases of blood clots combined with the low platelets reported after vaccination with Janssen's COVID-19 vaccine, the PROC has concluded that there is a possible link between the occurrence of these blood, blood clots combined with the low levels of blood platelets, thrombocytopenia, and the vaccination with the COVID-19 vaccine, Janssen. The product information will be updated to reflect this information and will include a warning and an update of the side effects. I will take this opportunity to provide you with some more details on the review by the Pharmacovigilance Risk Assessment Committee. At this moment, we have um, reviewed the available data, and the evaluation of these data revealed eight case reports of interest, which included severe cases of venous thrombosis, mostly at unusual sites, such as cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, CVST, splenic vein thrombosis, which is in the abdomen, as well as arterial thrombosis. And what's very important with these cases at, uh, is that they all had concomitant uh, thrombocytopenia, low platelets levels. All the reported cases occurred in the US, as you heard before, and one of these events was already reported in the clinical trials, while seven uh, occurred after the rollout of the vaccine in the United States. And um, uh, at this moment, um, there have been more than 7 million people vaccinated with the Janssen COVID vaccine in the United States. The reported cases occurred mostly in women under 60 years and within the first three weeks after the vaccination. A fatal outcome has been reported. The careful review of the cases and other available evidence have led the committee to the conclusion that these blood clotting disorders are very rare side effects of the vaccine. However, our work does not stop here. We will analyze any new data and any new evidence as it becomes available and provide updated guidance as needed. At this moment, it's not possible to identify clear risk factors for the occurrence of these very rare events, such as gender or age. The most plausible hypothesis, as we have seen with the AstraZeneca vaccine, is an immune response that leads to a condition similar to a typical heparin-induced thrombocytopenia hit. It's very important that healthcare professionals and those people coming for vaccination are aware of the possibility that these risks may occur and that they should look out for possible signs and symptoms that usually occur within the first two to three weeks following vaccination. These symptoms include shortness of breath, chest pain, swelling in the leg, persistent abdominal pain, neurological symptoms, including severe or persistent headaches or blurred vision, skin bruising beyond the site of injection. 
people experiencing any of these symptoms after vaccination should seek medical assistance. If treated early, healthcare professionals can help those affected in their recovery and avoid further complications. Blood clots, which occur in combination with low levels of blood platelets, require specialist clinical management. Healthcare professionals should consult applicable guidance and or consult specialists, for example, hematologists, uh, specialists in coagulation, to diagnose and treat these cases. In clinical trials that supported the uh, uh, conditional marketing application, the CHMP assessed that the benefits of the vaccine outweigh the risks and that the Janssen COVID vaccine is effective in preventing infections caused by COVID, a very serious disease. I'm pleased to leave the floor now to our moderator, Ms. Heine. Many thanks, Dr. Strauss and Mrs. Cook. We will now take questions from the floor. <clears throat> but uh, before, I want to explain you again how to raise your hand. So if you wish to ask a question, please click on the emoticon icon at the bottom of the WebEx window, and there you can click on raise hands. So when I give you the floor, please unmute yourself and turn on the camera. We can, you can then ask your question. So the first uh, question comes from Ludwig Berger from Reuters. Ludwig, please. Medical attention from hematologists can you actually specify what type of treatment the hematologist should perform on these people affected? Thank you. Many thanks. That's those questions are for Sabine, I think. No, please. Thank you uh, for the questions. I think um, the um, most plausible hypothesis at the moment um, uh, allows us to know what happens at the end of the cascade, so when the cases occur. And then we feel that there is a, a very a sim a similarity with an atypical heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. The cases are very rare. Um, we don't see very often thrombosis combined with thrombocytopenia. And if we discuss CVST, um, it's only in about 7% of the cases that they are accompanied by pl low platelet levels. So. Um, that's what we know for the moment. Uh, indeed, we have seen that um, the AstraZeneca vaccine is an adenovirus-based vaccine, just as the Janssen vaccine. So there are quite some similarities between the two vaccines, but there are also differences. For example, the AstraZeneca is a chimpanzee-based adenovirus, and the Janssen is a human adenovirus. And also there are differences between the spike protein, between Janssen and between AstraZeneca. So at the moment, we see that the cases have a lot of similarities. We think that the hypothesis to explain the end of the cascade is probably similar, but it's too early to draw any further conclusions. And as for the um, treatment, that's indeed a very uh, difficult uh, uh, um, issue. Uh, I think we have consulted uh, specialists previously and we have also been in close contact and following what's happening with the guidances. At the moment, um, we are not completely sure that heparin uh, would uh, cause a deterioration in these patients, but out of prudence, uh, because it's uh, uh, comparable with the HIT, um, the specialists um, recommend to avoid heparin in these cases and to use a non-heparin anticoagulants. And they all, all the guidelines recommend uh, further treatment with uh, immune globulins and, um, uh, and also for the uh, CVST. There are very specific ways of treating that, for example, thrombectomy. But for the moment, that is as good as we can give uh, any information. Um, in the different member states, there are different guidelines available uh, developed by learned societies. 
Um, but I think they all agree on the immune globulins and they also all agree on avoiding until the diagnosis is made for 100% certainty uh, on the avoidance of heparin. Okay, thanks. The next question comes from Danny Kemp from AFP. Danny, please. Hi. Can you see me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Um, can I be cheeky and ask a couple as well? First thing, could you um, please give us the updated um, number of reports for all four of the vaccines currently authorised in the uh, in the EU? Um, and secondly, I just wanted to ask you about um, Sputnik. Since this uses the same technology, will you be keeping a, a kind of extra eye on the possibility of plots for Sputnik? And have you indeed seen any reports of blood plots linked to Sputnik? Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, regarding the updated reports, I'll hand over to um, Dr. Peter Arlett. And the second question is going to go to Mrs. Cook. But first, Dr. Arlett, please. Thank you very much indeed. So um, if we look specifically at cases of thrombosis associated with thrombocytopenia, so uh, clots with low platelets, um, if we look then at the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, we have eight cases worldwide, and all eight cases come from the United States, as was presented earlier. If we then look at AstraZeneca vaccine, we have 287 cases, of which 142 come from uh, the European Economic Area. For Pfizer, 25 cases, and for Moderna, five cases. Um, the data lock for those um, is the uh, 4th of April. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Mrs. Cook, on the question regarding Sputnik, please. Yes, so the question was whether we would uh, be um, taking extra care with the Sputnik vaccine in view of the similarities of the adenoviruses and also whether we had seen any actual events. So let me first of all say, yes, of course, we will be paying very close to this, uh, very close attention to this issue during the review of the Sputnik um, dossier. And so far, we have not seen uh, any reports um, in the context of the information we have been able to review so far. Many thanks. The next question comes from Michael Birnbaum from the Washington Post. Michael, please. Hi. Um, sorry, I'm just getting my video to work here. Um, thanks so much for um, for, for, for this. Um, I uh, just wanted to, to ask, um, uh, I, are you, so the, the, the plan is to start the use of Johnson & Johnson right now. Are, are there any um, uh, concerns about starting to use this vaccine while it's still on pause in, uh, in the United States? Do you have any indication, are you able to tell from the data you've reviewed so far that these blood clotting events are less frequent with Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine than they are with AstraZeneca? Thank you. Thank you very much. Perhaps we start with the second question on whether blood clots are less frequent. Uh, Dr. Strauss, please. Thank you very much for that question. That's, of course, a very relevant one. Um, and I think at the moment um, we don't know. Um, what we do know is that because we started with AstraZeneca, people in Europe are very aware of it. And we receive probably more reports now. So the reporting might be more aligned with the occurrence. Um, as for the cases um, that have been uh, reported in the U.S., um, we are not. Uh, we, it's what we, what, uh, we discussed also with the FDA colleagues is that, of course, as we have seen, some of the cases can occur up until three weeks after the vaccination. So they paused it now for April since April 13. So we still have to wait and see if there are more cases coming in. So it's too early to say anything about the real occurrence of the cases. What we do know is that at the moment we have around 7 million vaccinated people in the U.S. and we have at this moment in time eight cases. So um, 
there is still no way of telling that it would occur less frequently or more frequently than um, with AstraZeneca for this moment in time. Many thanks, Dr. Strauss. And uh, Mrs. Cook, um, are you going to respond to the question on whether there are concerns now in case that uh, now the Janssen vaccine is being used? Yeah, no, thank you very much. And I think it, uh, it's a very important question. And, I, and this is exactly why Prague has done the review to make sure that we, that we have got these uh, very rare side events listed so that uh, healthcare professionals and uh, vaccinees uh, can be aware in the very rare event that these, uh, that these may, may happen. Um, so the benefits, uh, the, review, the benefits of the vaccine continue to outweigh these risks. And uh, we now have a detailed information in the labeling that alerts to these risks. We have detailed information for the healthcare professionals in case, in case there are any issues. So this is part of uh, the information that is provided on uh, as part of the rollout. So we're confident that um, uh, it can be rolled out uh, uh, appropriately. Many thanks. The next question comes from Nomi Kreske from Bloomberg. Nomi, please. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, can you tell us more about what additional studies uh, you'll be requiring of Johnson & Johnson um, as they restart the rollout of the vaccine in Europe? very much. Mrs. Strauss, can you respond to this question? Yeah, we already have quite some studies uh, in place for the Janssen vaccine, and those studies already include also um, research in uh, coagulation parameters. So to better address this uh, possible um, link with the thrombosis thrombocytopenia, um, and we also have, like was highlighted before, um, uh, commissioned studies from EMA, um, that are in place, and we will be discussing uh, the need if this is uh, sufficient or if we need additional studies, because a lot of it is already being addressed in the different studies that are requested for this vaccine. Many thanks. The next question comes from Helen Collis from Politico. Helen, please. Hi there. Um, is it too early to say if this is a class effect? I know that was touched on earlier. Um, and also, you said that so far you have not seen any reports of these unusual blood clots with thrombocytopenia with Sputnik. Um, but is your review, uh, what data is this based on? Is your review limited to clinical trial data or have you seen any data from the Russian rollout or in Hungary? or any other um, countries where it's being used. Thank you. Thank you very much. The first question goes to Dr. Strauss uh, and the second one to Mrs. Cook, but please, Dr. Strauss. Thank you very much. And indeed, it's um, um, these very rare and very specific cases of thrombosis and thrombocytopenia have occurred firstly with AstraZeneca, which is an adenovirus vector uh, um, uh, vaccine and um, also with now with Janssen. But like I um, highlighted uh, previously, there are differences between the two vaccines. Uh, one is using chimpanzee vaccine, uh, vector, the other one a human vector, and also the spike proteins are different uh, between the different vaccines. So um, it, it might be possible that there is a class effect, but I think it's really too early to conclude on that yet. Many thanks. Mrs. Cook, can you look into uh, the data that we're currently looking at for Sputnik? Yeah, and may maybe, uh, maybe I wasn't clear when I uh, made my remark on Sputnik. So our review of the Sputnik dossiers is really at an early stage. So uh, we, we, we haven't got to the point of looking at the uh, pharmacovigilance reports because we're not at that stage yet. But now that we're alerted to this as a possible side effect. It means we pay extra attention to it and we make sure that any reports that will come from the use in the field, wherever that may be, uh, will be part of the company's obligation to report to us. But the reason uh, we haven't seen it is because we're not at that stage of our, of, of our evaluation so far. Thank you. 
The next question comes from Nomi O'Leary from the Irish Times. Nomi. Hi, thank you very much for taking my question. Um, my question is about, I know we said that it wasn't possible to, at this point, conclude age and sex risk factors. Um, but at an earlier stage, there were suggestions of looking into things like contraceptive pill use, smoking, uh, things like that. Does the hypothesis that this is an immune response help us narrow down what could be uh, potential risk factors like that? Are, they, are we any way further down that road at this point? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dr. Strauss, please. Thank you very much. And, and yes, um, it's a very important question. And it's, it would be extremely helpful if we had uh, more information regarding this on who should we monitor and what should we look for exactly in patients or in people who will get the vaccine. Um, we are very aware of that. And um, we, we have researched it and investigated it. As for the uh, eight cases that we have now for the Janssen, what we do know is that there is one case who used an oral contraceptive that is in itself a risk factor to get CVST at a young age, but otherwise there were no specific risk factors available uh, that we know of in these eight cases. So um, we haven't progressed a whole lot on this, but further research is ongoing. And, and will continue in order to see if we can find certain risk factors or if we can identify patients who would be at a higher risk of the occurrence of this thrombos thrombosis together with the thrombocytopenia. Thank you very much. The next question comes from Martina davis gridner from the New York Times. Martina, please. Thanks so much for your time. I'll, I'll try and be uh, quick. Firstly, I just want to clarify something uh, in, in popular language. Your, the headline of your statement uh, says there is a, a possible link, but then you're telling us that you're intending to, uh, to list this as a side effect. Is it a possible side effect or is it a side effect for just ordinary people reading our stories and reading uh, these warnings. Um, another question on process is your uh, statement today comes before that of the U.S. authorities, yet the U.S. authorities said they, they needed more time. Um, can you speak a bit uh, about what led you to rush ahead? I know that you wanted to, to come out before the rollout, um, but it, it's, um, it's just an interesting asymmetry to the American authorities who are also looking at the same data as you are. So if you could illuminate us on that. And I have three very brief, uh, more scientific questions, if I may. Um, earlier, it was mentioned that the Pfizer vaccine had 25 cases of CBSD and Moderna had five reported cases in varying populations. Are these also being looked at as safety signals? And if not, why not? Um, another question on the science, um, one of the eight cases reviewed um, has been listed as details pe pending. Can you say if all eight cases had CVST and, and would you say that CVST is the defining hallmark of this uh, side effect or possible side effect? Or is it possible that this cluster of cases will include patients who had clots elsewhere in the body but not in the brain, plus the low platelets. Thanks so much. Okay, many thanks. Let's take these one by one. Perhaps Dr. Strauss first was the last one on the eight cases, and uh, then perhaps also the first one with a possible link, uh, whether it's a possible side effect or a side effect. Thank you very much. And um, uh, indeed, um, many of the cases have CVST, but not all of them. Of these cases, uh, of these eight cases, seven had CVST. Um, three of them had also thrombosis on other uh, sites in their body. So it's not only CVST, it's mostly um, thrombosis at unusual sites, like in, this, in the brain, like in the abdominal vessels. Uh, together with thrombocytopenia. So it's not only CVST here. Um, as for the other questions, uh, whether this is a signal, well, what we do is we look at those cases, and as um, I, uh, we have said before, CVST and thrombosis occur also in the general population. What we have here with the CVST and the unusual thrombosis, uh, together with the thrombocytopenia, those cases are 
um, rare and they do not occur in a high frequency, background frequency in the general population. And what we try to do is to look at what we see in the number of cases, so the observed, and we try to relate that to the number that we expect in the population. If we look at the AstraZeneca and the Janssen, then both of them had a higher occurrence we observed than what we would expect based on the background incidence of um, these uh, cases and events. Uh, while in the Pfizer and the Moderna, in view of the uh, population that has been exposed to the, uh, to the vaccine, um, we only have a, such a limited number of cases available that um, there is not a real signal yet available, or not a, a, a real signal. It's um, a very rare cases. I think that if you look at the uh, uh, exposure in the Pfizer, it's only in Europe more than 59 million. And I think um, I also have the uh, data on US. They have looked at it and there is no signal there. And the same holds true for the Moderna. Um, there was, for example, in the cases that were uh, uh, identified in the US, there was no thrombocytopenia. And for now, the cases that we have seen with the other vaccines, the observed is lower than what we would expect in the population in view of the number of uh, vaccinated people that we have available. Thanks, Dr. Strauss. There was also this question about, you know, whether it's a possible link or a side effect. Thank you for reminding. Yes, and, and um, what, what, we, what we do is if we feel that there is only a need for a warning because we are thinking and we need to further research an event, then it's only a warning in 4.4 in the uh, summary of product characteristics in Europe. But if we feel that there is a possible link and therefore a possible association with the use of the vaccine, we add it to 4.8 because we feel that there is uh, sufficient evidence to state that people should be careful because there might be indeed an adverse event that's very severe and serious. And in these cases that we have seen here is occurring very, very rarely. Thank you very much. So we still have one question to respond to, which is, you know, why we went ahead of FDA. And I give this question to Mrs. Cook to respond. Well, I'm not sure whether I'm the right person to respond to this, but I think it is very important to put this in the European context where we have already had experience of looking at very similar um, cases in the, with the AstraZeneca vaccine. And in fact, we've, we have been studying this for more than, I think the, the first uh, cases were about, were early March. So we were looking at, at it from early March until um, well, we're still looking at it, but uh, we, we uh, uh, came up with our conclusion on, on the 8th of April. So we had already done a very detailed review of the uh, risks and cases in the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine, which gave us uh, the experience to come to a conclusion in the context of the Janssen vaccine and a very similar conclusion in both cases. Many thanks. The next question comes from Norway. Oda Skietne. Oda, please. Uh, confirm that you can hear me, please. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, you cannot say exactly what mechanism causes these rare side effects, uh, but with AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson, could you walk us through some of the theories as to why this happened? What causes this immune response and where the problem might be? Dr. Strauss, yeah. Yeah, uh, I wish I could. What, 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 what we do have is an explanation what's happening once somebody gets this uh, probably immune-related adverse event. Um, we then know that um, platelets start clotting, that there is uh, uh, at the same time a clotting in certain areas that are very unusual but we do not yet know what is the cause, the actual cause of this occurring. It would be very helpful if we would know um, beforehand whether it might be a kind of genetic disorder or something else in the blood vessels. Uh, but 
at this moment in time, I know that there is a lot of research ongoing in order to try to resolve this uh, and to try to uh, elucidate the uh, factors that may contribute to the occurrence. But like I said, what we do know is that at the end of the cascade, but that's only helpful in order to uh, provide further treatment and to uh, be aware of the cases and, and for healthcare professionals to know that this may occur and that patients need a specific treatment. But we do not know yet what exactly causes the uh, occurrence of these rare events. Many thanks. The next question comes from Francia Itema from NOS. Francia. Hi, thanks for having my question. I'm wondering, um, how sure are you about this causal relationship? Because with AstraZeneca, you said uh, we see a strong association. I am curious how strong the association is here with the Johnson vaccine. And the second question is, um, two weeks ago, we also talked about Johnson, Moderna, and Pfizer. And then you said for all those three other vaccines, we don't see um, that it's, uh, it's higher than what you would expect. And then we talked about four cases in, if I remember correctly, four and a half million people. Now we have four more cases and two and a half million pe people more who are vaccinated. What changed in the meantime? Because I'm not understanding that completely. Thank you very much. Dr. Strauss, please. Thank you. Uh, I think what we have here for the Janssen is fewer cases at this moment. And therefore, it's, uh, uh, we have less information. But the cases that we have seen are very similar to the cases that we identified for AstraZeneca. So the thrombosis at mostly unusual uh, uh, places and the thrombocytopenia. And uh, based on the information that we have um, uh, already assessed previously and the knowledge that we gained and the information that has become available around these cases, because there's a lot of research ongoing and uh, there are several centers in Europe doing a lot of uh, work on this in order to further uh, uh, progress with this, uh, well, rare event. Um, we, we felt that based on this uh, quite limited number of cases, also in view of the number of exposed. The fact that it is thrombosis together with thrombocytopenia, and that doesn't occur very often, like we said, we felt that here the association is also uh, uh, clear. Uh, and I think um, because we had for AstraZeneca more cases, uh, that, that uh, it, it was easier to come to that decision. But based on the fact that the cases that we have now reviewed uh, have so, such a striking similarity, we feel confident that we also here have a uh, strong association uh, with the vaccination and sufficient information to update and provide information in 4.8. Because like it was also already stated, the most important thing here is it's very rare and therefore it's very difficult for healthcare professionals to recognize these cases. If these cases are recognized on time and uh, receive adequate treatment, uh, a lot of the complications can be prevented. So it's important that healthcare professionals, but also people who get vaccinated, are aware of this. And therefore, it's important that we provide this update in the SNPC also for the Janssen vaccine. There was this additional question about uh, what has changed since we had our last press briefing and the different numbers. Uh, I think that based on the uh, uh, additional information that we received from our FDA colleagues, we felt that the observed versus expect expected um, uh, changed and that uh, uh, there is more information available to suggest that these very specific cases are indeed linked to the vaccine. Thank you very much. So next we have a question from Kai Kupferschmidt. Kai, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, also, quickly, too, if I may, there is, you said it's too early to really know what the early part of the mechanism might be, but there, there is a paper out from, from Andreas Greinacher's group, a preprint at least, suggests it does have to do with a lot of the um, human proteins that are in the vaccine, so basically from the HEC293 cells in which the, the virus is grown. And it, it raised the question in my mind, whether there are clear cutoffs in, um, in these vaccines about how much of these human proteins can be in there from the cell culture. Has that been checked? Is that part of what you're looking at? 
Um, he also raises the EDTA. I'm curious what you think about that. And then just to be clear, because there's a lot of debate already on Twitter about this, the, the cases that you mentioned with Pfizer and Moderna, they were with, they were thrombosis with thrombocytopenia. Can you specify where they were? They clearly weren't in the US. Was it just Europe, these numbers? Thank you very much, Dr. Strauss, please. Uh, well, I, I, I know I followed the work from uh, Professor Geinach very carefully, and he had also a press conference last Friday that I think several maybe of your colleagues attended. It's um, very uh, difficult because there are theories, and I think that it's indeed important to look at all the different possibilities because we, uh, at the moment, we are not sure yet. Um, as you know, Professor Greinacher uh, has also been part of uh, uh, um, um, the group that has uh, s uh, evaluated the, the um, HIT-like uh, occurrence, and his group is very uh, experienced in this research. So we follow his work very clearly, but at the moment it's too early to say anything about uh, a certain hypothesis, uh, but um, we will follow up very carefully on that. And then I forgot the second question. Oh, that, that ED, exactly. Thanks. Peter, can you please go ahead? Yes, so thank you very much. It was going back to the numbers of cases reported. So um, um, when I spoke previously, I, I mentioned a data lock of 4th of April. I should correct that. It was the 13th of April. Um, and we had 25 cases for Pfizer and five for Moderna. These are cases in the UDRA vigilance database, and there's a legal obligation on the company for Pfizer and for Moderna to report all worldwide cases um, of serious reactions to us. Um, the uh, 25 cases are thrombosis with thrombocytopenia, and for Moderna, the five cases are thrombosis with thrombocytopenia. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question comes from Vasiliki Anguridi from News for Health. Vasiliki. Hello, and thank you for uh, taking my question. So you talked a little bit about the, um, the signs that uh, people that get vaccinated should look out for and also health professionals. Could you just repeat what those signs may be? Um, and are they the similar, the similar signs you, you see with people uh, that have side effects from the AstraZeneca vaccine? And also, um, uh, do you, is there any, um, are you worried that these cases and the continue uh, problems that arise in the vaccination pro uh, programs in uh, throughout Europe would uh, impede uh, the immunization of the European population uh, throughout? Thank you. Thanks, Vasiliki. I think these are two questions. The first one by Dr. Strauss and the second one for Mrs. Cook. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, as for the symptoms to look out, <clears throat> are shortness of breath, chest pain, swelling in the leg, persistent abdominal pain, neurological symptoms, and that includes a severe headache or persistent headache, blurred vision, and skin bruising beyond the site of the injection. Those are the most telling symptoms that we have been able to identify based on the careful review of the cases. Many thanks. And now, Mrs. Cook, regarding the, whether we are concerns regarding the vaccination campaigns. Yeah, I think that our, what we want to do is make sure that people have the facts and the information available to them uh, to take action in case of, of, of these severe, uh, of these possible and very rare side effects. But I have to stress again that they are very rare and that in the vast majority of cases, the, these vaccines are going to prevent uh, death and hospitalization from COVID-19. And COVID-19 uh, has a, a, a very high mortality rate in, in, uh, in a number of populations as well. So we always have to balance the benefits of a vaccine with the potential risks and this is uh, part of the evaluation that has been uh, done by Prague so far. Many thanks. So before we close, we take another two questions. Uh, the next one is Anja Ettel from Die Welt. Yes, hello. Thanks for taking my questions. I have just an updated one because you just gave us some updated numbers about 
uh, CVSD cases uh, after vaccination. And I'm just interested to know when exactly um, can we expect more information or even a detailed analysis about these new cases of CVST and SVT, especially for the vaccine of AstraZeneca. And um, in the signal assessment report of April, there was a debate about changing the section 4.4 of the SMPC of Exiberia. Um, and to be more precise, some member states proposed to include a warning, and I quote, benefit risk should be considered taking into account the availability of um, the alternatives and epidemiological local, local data. And uh, some members even proposed to also include it in section 4.1. But I think in the end, this phrase never appeared, not in section 4.1 and not in 4.4. So could you tell us why, please? Um, and if there is a formal assessment needed for 4.1, um, when will this assessment be concluded? And also a, a little question about um, AstraZeneca and the specific obligation deadline, which ends on April 30th, I think, um, and they should include data for the elderly from the latest US study. Did the company already provide these necessary data? And which kind of guidance will EMA give with view to the fact that the doses interval there is four weeks and not eight or 12 or even 26 weeks like we've read before. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Regarding AstraZeneca, you know that the process is still ongoing, but um, I'm now handing over to Dr. Strauss. Thank you. Uh, well, in 4.1, there is already information that the vaccine should be administered in um, accordance with local guidelines and, and local uh, information. So uh, that's already there in 4.1. So we felt that it wasn't useful to add anything in addition to that because we felt that was a very clear statement. And the same holds true for 4.4 um, because we felt that it was already there um, and that uh, um, the different member states uh, may have different considerations in uh, how they use the different vaccines. Um, so that's why we didn't add it to AstraZeneca and we also didn't add it to Janssen. Um, and main, the main reason there is that it's already reflected adequately and sufficiently in 4.1. Thank you very much. Perhaps um, yeah. Mrs. Cook. Yeah. if I could just also add, because in fact we didn't want to focus on the AstraZeneca review during uh, this uh, press briefing because the review is very much ongoing and will continue to be ongoing, but um, you will have seen that we did publish an update on our review of the AstraZeneca and what, what the now we have involved the uh, Committee for Human um, Medicinal Products. So there's a lot of discussions ongoing at, at the moment and we, we would expect to be able to provide some further updates by the end of the week. And I also want to hand over to Dr. Arlet regarding the probably the additional for, uh, information and when we can expect it. So thanks. Just to compliment the previous two answers. Um, um, Annie, you asked about um, cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. And it is true that most or many of the cases that we're talking about in the numbers provided relate to cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. But the um, overall, they are thrombosis with thrombocytopenia. So it's a, it's a larger set, if you like, than just the cases of cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. So just a point of, of accuracy. You asked about when you might see more detail. Well, obviously, assessments um, reports generally get published, and we would hope that that would hap will happen in the coming days. And um, uh, you asked about the US data. Um, these have not yet been submitted to the European Medicines Agency, but we are anticipating in the weeks ahead that um, data may be submitted. And of course, as soon as it comes in, we'll then have um, uh, an opportunity to look again at the levels of um, benefits in different populations. Um, so thanks very much. Thank you very much. The last question comes from Aude Le Cribet, uh, from Medscape. Aude, please. Hi, thank you for taking my questions. So I have a question about the eight cases. Uh, can, could you give the sex ratio, the number of different types of thrombosis locations for this eight? I think you just said seven um, sinus thrombosis, but uh, the three other locations, uh, I don't know what they were. And also the age of each of these eight patients, please. 
is my first question. If I understood you correctly, you wanted details on the specific eight cases uh, in the, with the Janssen vaccine. Uh, yes, Dr. Strauss? The sex ratio, the, the age of the patients. Thank you. I cannot give you uh, all eight ages, um, but they are between 18 and 49, um, these cases. Uh, and I think the me median age is 33. Um, the, uh, we had, from the eight cases, we had seven CVSTs, one case with a deep vein thrombosis and thrombocytopenia. So like it was uh, stated already by Dr. Peter Arlett, that's the telling sign, I think, thrombosis in combination with thrombocytopenia. And um, the other uh, case, the other uh, locations were a splangic vein um, and uh, arterial uh, thrombosis. Okay, many thanks. So uh, we are now closing this press briefing. Thank you very much for your questions and for attending today. Uh, if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to follow up with our press office. And um, also please check out our website at ema.europa.eu because here you will find a lot of additional information on safety monitoring of COVID-19 vaccines in Europe. So thanks again also to our speakers and have a good rest of the day. Thank you very much.